Hey what's going on guys Tanmay for Simple Snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on the operating systems especially the memory management part and today we are going to be taking a look at another page replacement algorithm which is known as optimal page replacement algorithm so in the previous video we saw the first in first out page replacement algorithm and if you have missed that video you can check it out in this playlist and i'll also link it in the cards so you can see it on the top right corner so with that being said let's start off with today's topic and we'll also solve a numerical to basically understand the working of optimal page replacement now as the name suggest in this algorithm pages are replaced which are not used for the longest duration of time in the future so this means that this algorithm looks into the future basically looks into or looks ahead into the timeline and checks which all pages are going to be needed next and replaces that page which is not going to be needed for the longest amount of time okay so this algorithm replaces the page which will not be referred for so long in future so this is just another way of putting point number 1 which means that the algorithm replaces the page which is not going to be required for the longest amount of time in future okay now in reality this algorithm cannot be implemented in general purpose operating systems because it is impossible to compute reliably how long it will be before a page is going to be used so this makes sense right in a actual processing system in your laptop system or in your desktop system or any other complex operating system there are so many processes which are divided into n number of pages right so at a given time this replacement algorithm cannot predict which all pages are going to be required in the next second right because this processing happens so fast it is in microseconds milliseconds nanoseconds and the processes keep on changing so in turn the pages that is the processes that are divided into multiple pages also will keep on changing right so at every second or every moment you cannot keep a track of all the pages which are going to be needed in future right so that is the reason why optimal page replacement is not really practically implemented in any kind of operating systems it is only theoretical in nature but using this algorithm or using this concept we can definitely solve a basic numerical so let's see a numerical and the idea will be very clear okay so let me just first read the question so let us consider page reference string starting from 7 to 2 so these are the page names basically so page number 7 page number 0 page number 1 so these are basically the page names okay so a reference string essentially whenever a question related to page replacement algorithm comes this reference string is the name of the pages that is required so it is required in this order by the cpu and we have four page slots that is in the memory that is in the main memory ram we have only four frames free so we have four page slots right so four pages can go into these four frames because frame size and page size is going to be same and whatever replacement algorithms and replacement is going to happen it is going to happen in those four frames now what do you have to calculate is we have to calculate the number of page faults page fault probability and page fault percentage now if you have seen the previous video these three things we also calculated in the previous video so it's going to be pretty much similar so let's start off with the solution so as i mentioned the reference string is basically the page number or page reference that the cpu is wanting okay so the cpu is wanting page number 7 first page number 0 second page number 1 third and so on and so forth so this reference string can also consist of alphabets or some other symbols also just to confuse you guys basically this is just the page number that is requested by the cpu and number of page slots is given as 4 so you can see we have drawn the four page slots over here so this is frame number 1 frame number 2 frame number 3 and frame number 4 in the main memory and now let's start off with the numerical and you'll understand the working as we move through the numerical very well so first i'm just going to write these page reference numbers on each of these iterations so for first iteration i'm going to write 7 because 7 comes first then similarly 0 1 and so on and so forth okay so as you can see i have already written all the page reference numbers so in every iteration a page is going to be loaded into the memory right so let's start off with the first step so in first step you can see that the cpu is wanting page number 7 now if you observe all the frames for the first step so this is basically the first step okay now if you observe there are no pages in the any of the frames right which means all the frames are empty and since there are no pages in the frame a page fault is generated so a page fault is basically a signal to the operating system that the requested page is not there in the main memory and we have to load it from the secondary memory right that is we have to load it from the virtual memory into the primary memory 
so this is what paging is all about we've discussed all the theory about paging in previous videos in this playlist so if you don't know what they are you can check that out so i'm just gonna mark a x over here which is depicting a page fault and then 7 is loaded into first frame now cpu wants 0 that is page number 0 so we have 7 in f1 from the previous step now it is wanting 0 so 0 is not there in any of the frames so again a page fault is generated and 0 is loaded into frame 2 similarly for 1 and 2 that is step number 3 and 4 1 is not gonna be there it is gonna be loaded and 7 and 0 is already gonna be there similarly over here 7, 0 and 1 are gonna be there but this page number 2 is not gonna be there which means again a page fault and 2 is gonna be loaded so if you observe for the first 4 steps because the frames were empty and there were no pages actually initially so for the first 4 times we had page faults and all the 4 different pages that is page number 7, 0, 1 and 2 were all loaded into these respective frames now moving on to step number 5 you can see that CPU is wanting 0 but if you observe 0 is already there in frame number 2 which means that a page fault is not going to be generated right so here page fault is not going to be generated I'm just going to mark a tick mark over here which states that there is no page fault and I'm just going to write these pages as it is in those frames because there is no replacement happening as of now so now comes another page page 3 so now if you observe page 3 is not there in any of these frames so this is where the page replacement algorithm comes into picture and what the page replacement algorithm states that is you have to replace that page from either of these frames which is not gonna be used or which is not gonna be required for the longest time in future okay so we are at step number six right so starting from step number six we have to look into the future that is we have to look ahead and we have to see that which of the page is not gonna be used for the longest amount of time from these four pages so let's take a look at first page itself that is page seven now if you observe after three that is after step number six we want zero we want four we want two we want three we want zero we want three and we want two which means that we don't want page number seven ever after step number six right that is ahead of step number six we do not want page seven ever so that is the reason why we can replace this seven with this new incoming page three so this is what that optimal page replacement is all about because optimal page replacement looks into the future and sees what all pages are needed and it replaces only that page which is not going to be needed for the longest amount of time now seven is not going to be needed ever right so we can easily replace that now similarly that can happen for page number one also so if you observe page number one is also not needed throughout after step number six right so you can replace either one or seven so here what we'll do is we'll just replace seven you can also go ahead with 1 because it is not needed ever but if there was a case where 1 was needed at the end then you'll have to replace 7 only because 7 is not needed at all right so replacing page number 7 with 3 and this is a page fault right because 3 was not there in the memory it had to be replaced instead of 7 so a page fault has happened and rest of the things are gonna be as it is so 0 1 and 2 let's move on to step number 7 in step number 7 we want 0, 0 is already there in the memory so I'm just gonna write 3, 0, 1, 2 as it is this is not a page fault now let's see for page 4 so page 4 is not there in any of the frames and we have to swap out one of the frame values that is one of the page we have to swap out from these frames and replace it with 4 right so again using the optimal page replacement let's observe when do we require 3 so 3 is needed at Two steps ahead right so after 2 we have 3 0 is also gonna be required at this step over here 1 is not gonna be required anytime soon right you can see that after this step we do not require 1 ever so this is where we can swap out 1 and replace it with 4 so I'm gonna write 4 over here this is a page fault scenario and rest of the pages are gonna be as it is so I hope you are understanding how optimal page replacement works by looking into the future which all pages are needed and replacing only that page which is not going to be needed for the longest time in future so moving ahead page 2 is requested in this step we already have 2 in memory so there is no page fault over here I'm just gonna write 3 0 4 2 as it is again for this step 3 is requested so 3 is already there in memory so 3 0 4 2 no page fault here 0 is requested 0 is already there so 3 0 4 2 no page fault 
and pretty much for the last two steps also the requested pages are already there in memory so i'm just gonna write these pages as it is and there is no page fault over here so this was the complete numerical and now we still have to find the number of page faults page fault probability and page fault percentage but i hope you have understood how to use optimal page replacement and how to understand which page to be replaced by looking into the future or by looking ahead in time which page is not going to be required for the longest amount of time okay so let's calculate number of page faults over here just count this number of x over here so we have 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so number of page faults is 6 so the page fault probability is given by number of page faults divided by the total number of memory accesses so i'm just going to count the number of times or number of steps required so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 so 6 by 13 this is going to give us the value of 0 0.461 similarly to calculate the page fault percentage we simply have to take the number of page faults divided by the total number of memory accesses that is 13 and multiplied by 100 so basic percentage formula we are applying which gives us the value of 46.1 percent so these are the three final answers for this required question now one thing i wanted to discuss about is what if the reference string was slightly different okay so i'm just going to change the last few values of the reference string to make you understand which page is supposed to be swapped out once again so that it is very clear to you Okay, so what I did is I just changed two values of the reference string. So I changed this 3 to 7 and I changed 0 to 1 just to show you and explain you which page is supposed to be swapped out when there is competition between two pages. Okay, so in the swapping out of this question, we saw that in both the cases, the pages were not going to be required anytime soon, right? They were not even going to be required at all. So that's why the swapping was very easy. But let's assume that we are at this step okay so we have in memory 3042 and now a page number 7 is coming so some page has to be replaced out right so we have to use this optimal page replacement logic and by that logic we have to look ahead in time and we have to see which page is going to be required the last and we have to swap that out so we have to see okay after 7 1 is coming so we cannot replace 1 and we don't even have 1 in the memory so there's no question of replacing page 1 out so let's move ahead. Now we have 3 which is coming after 1. So we can replace 3 but if you see after 3 we have 2 also. So 2 is the last page which is not going to be used for the longest duration right. So we do not require 2 over here. We do not require 2 over here but we require 2 at the last. So that is the reason why we will swap out 2 and replace it with 7. Okay. So I'm going to write 7 over here. This is going to be a page fault and rest of the things are going to be as it is so 304 now let's take a look at this step in this step we are wanting page 1 so we have to replace one of the pages over here with this one now again using the same optimal page replacement logic we will look ahead in time and we will see that 7 that we just got into memory one step back is not going to be used ever after this right so here 3 is used and here 2 is used but 7 is not used similarly 4 is also never used so we have choice now to either replace 4 or 7. So I'm going to replace 4 and instead of 4 I'm going to write 1. The rest of the things are going to be as it is 3, 0, 7. And this is going to be a page fault scenario. For this step 3 is already there in memory so 3, 0, 1, 7. No page fault. And for the last step again there is a page fault. Because 2 is required and 2 is not there in the memory. So I'm just going to replace any of these frames because 2 is the last page that is requested. And then you can swap out any of the page. So I'm going to write 2 over here, 0, 1, 7 as it is and this is a page fault. So I hope you understood the difference over here and just by changing two page names in the reference string, there's a lot of difference happening over here. And now I hope you have understood how to use the optimal page replacement algorithm logic. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the optimal page replacement. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. If you haven't yet subscribed on this channel, make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. And thanks for watching guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.